I was on my way over to see a man I didn't know, Vance Connor. He said he was in trouble. Vance Connor owned a large sugar company. He was considered a big man. In the fog, I was having trouble finding Connor's house when I saw a man resting on a doorstep. I figured he might be able to help, but I was wrong. He was dead. The knife in his back told its own story. Clutched in his hand was a piece of paper. On it was printed the name and address of Vance Connor. As I rang the bell, I wondered how Mr. Connor was going to explain murder to me. Oh, Lanyard, come in. Wait a minute, Connor. Take a look. What happened? I don't know. I found him on his steps. He's dead. saw him in my life before. Hello, police. This is Vance Connor, 321 Beacon. There's a dead man on my front doorstep. Right. Don't you think you ought to report it as a murder? Why, did you kill him? No. Did you? I don't know. Maybe I did. In a way. You see, I'm on the verge of ruin. That's why I wanted to see you tonight. That doesn't explain much, Mr. Connor. You know what my business is, don't you? Uh huh? Sugar. There's a company called the Southern Cross with plantations in the Philippines. They dump their product on the market for less than it costs me to produce. What the answer is, I don't know. But I... Well, let's say I caused a rumor to be circulated that any Southern Cross worker who could supply the answer would be handsomely rewarded. Ah. And you think out there is one who found his reward, huh? Possibly. Isn't that someone at the door? The next day I was aboard a ship leaving for Manila. Now, there's one thing more I want to tell you. Oh. It's about Angela. Angela? Yes, my stepdaughter. I want to tell you about her because you'll be on the ship together. I've raised Angela more like a son than a daughter. I've given her the responsibilities of a man, of a partner, in fact. She's going to Manila for the same reason you are. Oh. You didn't tell me that. Come on. Hello, Dad. So close to sailing time, I gave up expecting you. We were delayed. This is my friend, Michael Lanyard. Oh. He's sailing with you, and I've told him to look out for you. Mr. Lanyard, I'm going to love being looked out for. Well, goodbye. I'll take care of everything while you're away. Bye. Pardon me, folks. I don't know you and you don't know me, but that ain't no reason we can't yell at each other over the fence now, is it? I'm Jim Strait. Where I go, I buy. Well, why don't you sit down, Mr. Strait? Why, I'm sitting. Thank you, ma'am. What'd you say your name was? I didn't say. However, it's Lanyard, Michael Lanyard. I've been watching you two for a couple of days. Now I'm mighty glad to know you. What do you and Mrs. Lanyard have? Well, thanks. But this is Miss Angela Connor. Oh, I'm sorry. In my book, you look like a couple of newlyweds. Uh -huh. Just shows how wrong a book can be. I don't know what to say. Forget about it, Mr. Strait. Michael, I think we should invite Mr. Strait to be our guest, don't you? Uh -huh. I think you're right. Well, this is a business trip for me. Well, that's nice. I've got an investment outside of Manila that I want to check. Oh, and I guess I used it as kind of an excuse to get away, too. Investments are always a good excuse to get away. Steward. 
Can't get over my being so wrong. Thought for sure you were newlyweds. What do you have, Mr. Strait? I took Angela to her stateroom. I didn't ask any questions. But now I was wondering about someone new, Jim Strait. Good night, Angela. Sleep well, huh? Michael, won't you come in for a moment? Maria. My jewel case, you know the one. Would you bring it and hang these up? Maybe it isn't important, but I'd like you to take care of something for me while we're on the ship. Oh. If it's jewelry, why don't you leave it with a purser? Well, I would, except I think it might be safer with you. It's nothing, really. But please, don't open it. You don't mind? No, I don't mind. In a way, though, I do mind being taken for a fool. Is that what you think I'm doing? Frankly, Angela, I don't know what to think. Good night. I don't like playing games when I don't know the rules. I had a feeling Angela wasn't on the level. I headed for the ship's doctor. She'd asked me not to open the case, but she hadn't asked me not to have it x-rayed. The x-ray picture told its own story. I decided to go back to Angela's stateroom. I remembered her stepfather had tried to explain a murdered man to me. Now I wanted to hear Angela's reason for playing me for a fool. I figured too it was time to stop wondering and maybe start putting the pieces together. Michael, what is it? Your, uh, jewel box. You opened it. No. You couldn't open it without a saw or a chisel. The lock's filled with soda. Well, you found that out. Why'd you bring it back? Because there's nothing in it. I had it x-rayed by the ship's doctor. I told you I hated being taken for a fool. Michael, let me explain. It was... Well, a sort of test my stepfather thought of. Or was it a trap you thought of? Well, if it was a trap, all I caught in it was a man who was smarter than I am. Next time, don't be so obvious, huh? Maybe Angela had told the truth. Maybe Vance Connor had suggested the test. But my hunch kept saying something else. I saw straight. I wondered what he was doing. Whose team he was on. And suddenly I didn't like him. I was glad to be alone for a moment. No straight, no Angela. I'd given straight several opportunities to make a move. But so far nothing had happened. I was either wrong about straight, or he was playing it very smart. And then I heard a muffled gunshot. I started in the direction of the shot. Somebody had been a target. I wondered who. And I recognized it. It was Angela's coat. Now I knew who had been killed and thrown overboard. I made myself two promises. I'd find the person who had murdered her, and I'd get the answer to the low-cost sugar being sold by Southern Cross. I had a feeling that both things were tied together. Well, hello, Michael. For a moment, I didn't believe my eyes. Then I realized that someone had been fooled by Angela's coat. I asked about her maid. Angela said she was out. I told her what had happened, that her maid had been killed by mistake. She was shocked. I realized Angela had been honest with me from the start. I added that until we arrived in Manila, she wasn't going to get out of my sight. I didn't want anyone to have a second chance.
It was from Vance Connor. It stated he'd made a deal with Southern Cross. He no longer required me. It was no use to wonder. I decided to find out. I sent Connor a radiogram. I asked him to reconfirm his message to me. I told him to do it fast. Wish I'd known you played this game. Say, that's a nasty business about Miss Connor's maid. What's her name? Maria. I hear you've been telling around about a shot you thought you heard. I heard a shot. That's funny nobody else did. But if there was a shot, sounds sort of like murder. You know what I'd do? No. I'd look for the gun. You think you'd find it at the bottom of the ocean? Bottom of the ocean? If you'd killed her, isn't that where it would be? Yeah, maybe you're right. On a boat, I, I guess it's easy to get rid of a gun. Thanks. Good news? Straight seemed too interested in my radiogram. Something important. An old friend of mine just died and left me $9 million. <laughs> Always joking. Say, Mike, do you know anything about sugar? No, why? Well, as a stockholder in a company called Southern Cross, I'm going out to inspect what I've got my money in. That's why I'm making this trip. You can see in the Southern Cross plantation where tourists are never allowed. What do you say? What do I say about what? Coming with me, I mean, as my guest. You see a lot more of the islands than you ever would any other way. How about it? That's the best proposition I've had all day. Good. Two days later, we reached the Southern Cross Plantation. We made the trip in one of their boats. Straight told me the company owned the whole island. Cane fields, refineries, warehouses, and harbor. Then I got my first look at Colonel Valenza's house. Or maybe he would call it a castle. I had the feeling I'd walked into an armed camp. And I began to wander again. Colonel Valenza's appearance didn't surprise me. Colonel Valenza, I'm Jim Strait. Glad to see you, Senor. This is Michael Lanyard. Senor Lanyard, happy to meet you. Thank you, Colonel. I hope I haven't inconvenienced you by bringing along a friend. Oh, not at all, Senor Strait, not at all. You seem to have quite an operation here, Colonel. There is a lot of work before one can refine sugar, Senor. Uh -huh. Must be. Well, Colonel, that's why I made the trip. I want to find out how my investment is being handled. Tomorrow I shall show you and your guest the Southern Cross Plantation. I hope I can make your visit interesting. Oh, thanks, Colonel. Dinner will be at 7.30. Next morning, I decided to look the island over alone. But I wasn't alone. In a way, I was a prisoner. As Valenza started his tour, I began to think. Vance Connor had sent for me. On his doorstep, I'd found a dead man. Connor said he'd be bankrupt unless he could find the answer as to how Southern Cross sold sugar for less than his company could produce it. I thought about straight. I thought about Angela's maid who'd been killed by mistake. I thought about how worried Angela had been when I told her I'd accepted Straight's invitation. Then I had the feeling that Southern Cross had a plan much bigger than just low-cost sugar. The answer was here on the plantation. Valenza carefully avoided certain roads. We went only where he wanted to go. I saw cane fields, brush, and more cane fields. And I knew what he avoided had to be important. And maybe that was the answer. Next day I tried again. I was lucky. Neither Valenza nor Strait was around. I began to search the areas that Valenza had so carefully avoided. About three hours later, I'd seen enough to recognize the Southern Cross operation. I had seen men pulling wagons. I had seen dirt and blood. I wanted to find where they kept these poor devils at night. It didn't take long. The island had many such places. I had thought that they were warehouses, but I'd been wrong. This plantation was a concentration camp, 
And the answer to the Southern Cross low-cost sugar was one deadly thing. Slave labor. It was a familiar pattern, and it turned my stomach. I had all the answers. And if I was lucky, Vance Connor could have them, too. You were out early, senor. Maybe you had trouble sleeping. Something on your mind, perhaps? I was wondering about some of the things we saw yesterday, Colonel. How many workers do you have on this island? Um, seven or eight thousand. If we didn't meet a soul. I didn't see a house. It's not even a shack. We provide for them, senor. In there? The stockade, yes. With an armed guard and a whipping post. Every plantation has a little trouble now and then. And you correct it with the lash. The lash is the only law they know. Not where I come from. We gave up slavery a long time ago. I'll show you back to the house. When I got back to the house, I found that somebody had gone through my luggage and taken my gun. Valenza and Strait had done a thorough job. How do you escape from an island? Alcatraz would have been easier. I had a feeling I was sitting on my own grave. I didn't like it. I needed a break. And with luck, I might end the slave labor. Hello, Michael. Hello, Angela. <laughs> That's another thing I like about you, Michael. You never seem surprised. When did you arrive? Very shortly after you. See, I didn't want to let you out of my sight for even a second. The lens and straight said you've been tremendously curious. Are you still curious? Yeah. Why did you kill your maid? You deserve an answer for that, Michael. She became too inquisitive. She started to guess a lot of the right answers. She wanted money. I don't like blackmail. Uh, it's interesting. You see how it is? I made a mistake. I admit it. Mistake, Michael? I thought you loved your stepfather. I thought you were working for him instead of against him. Now you think I'm some sort of a traitor. Is that it? I suppose so. <laughs> a traitor to what? I've hated Vance Connor ever since I can remember. He always said he'd bring me up to be a man. Or maybe he did. Just man enough to ruin him. Why do you want to? I don't have to tell you, Mike. But I want to. I want you to understand. It's because I have a dream. Today, a small island in the Philippines. Tomorrow. Who knows? Who knows? Michael, I have a rather large voice in this operation. I have only to say the word and it will be done. Just what is the word, Angela? Partner. Instead of Valencia and Strait and myself, we could be four. Why? Because of any man I ever met, I could be happy with you. You're gonna think I'm a fool, Angela. But I could never be happy with you. Well, you are a fool. I told you it wouldn't work. Okay, Lanyard, we'll do it the hard way. You're going back to the mainland. The boat's waiting at the dock. I'll go and pack. I said the hard way. After you've traveled about an hour, the boat will blow up. An unfortunate accident. Tragic end to your colorful career. Except for one thing. I don't like doing things the hard way.
I had to stay out of Valenza's hands long enough to reach one of the camps. I knew if I could free a few hundred men, the Southern Cross Empire would fall. I could still hear Angela's words. Today, a small island. Tomorrow, who knows? Vance Connor had raised her like a son. He taught her to compete as a man. He tried to change nature, and the pressure became too great. Something snapped. Angela looked for power and kingdoms. Connor became a symbol of hate, someone she wanted to destroy. Strangely enough, I felt sorry for her. Then I reached one of the filthy camps. I had to move, and move fast. slowly. I needed their help. Then I heard Valenza. That's all for you, senor. When the men found they were free, they went mad. Angela died instantly, a bullet in her heart. What about the others? Strait and Valenza weren't quite so fortunate. I don't understand. I raised Angela. I brought her up as if she were my own. I treated her as if she were a full partner. As if she were a man. I trusted her. Why should she turn on me? Maybe she felt you cheated her. Maybe she wanted to be treated as a... As a woman. <laughs> 